This is a Louis T. Network exclusive. Who else could it be? But me, your man, Louis T. Welcome, you are in the lab room, of course. I'm your host, Lou. Thank you for joining me on the 2016 NFL Draft Prospects 101 Series. Your guy to some of the biggest and hottest names the 2016 NFL Draft. I'm talking pass rushers right now, man. I'm, I told you, if I had time, I was going to come back around to them because that's one of those premier positions in the National Football League. You got a couple of those on your team, a couple of quarterback baggers couple of hunters that can go and get you some of the QB. You got a chance in this league. And this is one of those guys under the radar starting to pick up a little bit of steam as we get closer and closer to the draft. And I wasn't sold on him totally initially in the process. Watching him at the combine, I said on my breakdown of day three of the combine that I thought he looked like an uptight tester, a guy that had all the answers to the test before he took it, got the test, and it was a totally different exam, and he was guessing. Instead of just going out and letting his athleticism show, he just was out there trying to guess what the next move was going to be, trying to be one step ahead of the curve instead of just allowing things to flow. And I thought he looked uptight, but one thing was undeniable. The guy was very athletic, and I saw that when I put on the tape, and he sold me on his value at the next level. I'm talking about a guy that James Carter, on James Carter TV, who I just was able to have the privilege of being on his show talking NFL Draft, call one of his sleepers of the draft. I'm talking about outside linebacker at Boise State, Kamale Correa. Let's talk about Kamale Correa and what Kamale Correa brings to the table as a pass rusher again. This draft is not particularly deep with pass rushers, so he's a guy that I think is going to pique the interest of a lot of teams and probably going to come off the board a lot sooner rather than later. Let's talk about Kamale Correa and what he brings to the table. 6'2", 245, great size for an outside linebacker. And I actually think it wouldn't surprise me at all if he got to camp and he was around 250 pounds. He's a very solid, stout guy. And we'll talk about his stoutness a little bit later on, but let's talk about what makes him a solid player, and then we'll talk about what could potentially make him exceptional down the road. He's an athlete, first and foremost. That's the first pro. You saw it at the combine. I could talk about him being an uptight tester and all of that stuff, which turned me off to him, but the one thing I couldn't deny, even though I didn't like him guessing, was that he was an athlete. I could see that watching the combine, and you can see that watching the tape. Comfortable in zone drops is the next pro. Another thing that you don't get with every single pass rusher in this draft. Joey Bosa, not comfortable dropping into coverage. I would even tell you that a guy like Noah Spence, not particularly comfortable dropping into coverage. He's a guy that wants to put his hand in the dirt. Well, Kamale Correa, a little bit different. He can drop in his own coverage. He's comfortable out of space. And you can see that when you put on the tape. And you saw that at the combine, even though I thought he was trying to guess. He was comfortable out in space. But these are the things that are going to help him excel at the next level. If he's going to turn into a premier pass rusher, it's going to be because of the next few pros that I run off, starting with this one. Explosive off the edge. Explosive, explosive, explosive. If you're going to be a pass rusher at the next level and you're not a technician, then you better be explosive. And that's exactly what Kamale Correa is. He's a guy that is very explosive off the edge. There are a number of times on tape where he blows by the tackle before the tackle even gets to lay a finger on him and he's at the quarterback knocking the football out of his hands. And the one thing I love about him is when he gets to the quarterback and the quarterback doesn't know he's coming, when you get an uninvited guest to your house and they're knocking on the door and you didn't expect them and the house is dirty and you're like, who is it? And it's Kamale Correa. He's at the door. He's looking to get the goodies out the bag, man. He wants the football. He's not coming just to knock the quarterback down and say, yeah, I got me a sack. No, he wants the football, and that's what we all want. I want the ball. 
Give me the ball. Damn the quarterback. Damn the sack. I want the football. If you get the football, guess what? You get a sack attached to it. So he's one of those guys explosive off the edge. And when he gets there, if the quarterback doesn't know he's got an uninvited guest, he's coming away with that football as well. Convert speed to power is the next pro. And this is one of those situations where speed can benefit you. I told you he's explosive. Well, he takes that explosiveness that he used to get by the tackle without a finger being laid on him and turns that into power. Now he's opening up those hips, looking for that speed rush. Here comes that long arm of the law to reach out and touch that tackle, jack him up, put him on skates, put him on his backside. Go turn on the Hawaii tape. If you want to see his power, if you want to see the speed turn into power, turn on the Hawaii tape. I was, <laughs> I was eating some food as I was watching him in the Hawaii game, and I didn't know this was coming. He blows the tackle up. I mean, obliterates him, puts him on his backside, and he, he turned me into the uh, the guy on uh, Water Boy. The, the one that you can't understand what he's saying. I'm eating my food and he blows this guy up and I go, don't kill him. <laughs> I mean, I didn't know what was going on. I was like, I had to run it back because again, all I had seen up until that point was a bunch of speed, a lot of speed moves, a couple of rips to the inside, but nothing brute like that where he just was physical with violent hands, blew this guy up. I mean, absolutely put him on his backside. It was beautiful. Didn't get the sack but he did blow that guy up, and I think you could argue that that tackle got away with holding on that particular play, but that's nor here nor there. The moral of the story is the guy can convert speed to power, and that's a big, big pro for him moving on to the next level. Good grip move to the inside, okay? I always talk about counters, okay? If you're gonna use the speed to the outside, you need a, you need a change up off that fastball, you need a curve, something off speed to complement that speed rush to the outside. You don't have to have a bunch of moves. See, that's the misconception about pass rushes. You don't have to have 11 different tricks in your bag. You can only have two. You can only have three, as long as they play off of one another. You gotta be able to change speeds on guys. Much like a pitcher that's a reliever or a closer. Look, there are closers out there that for years, they only had two or three pitches that they could deliver, but they could deliver them like nobody's business and they, and they played off of one another. So he's one of those guys that'll hit you with that outside move, then they'll come back inside with that rip, and it's tough to stop. And I like that about Camelay Correa. He's a guy that will use that rip move to the inside and win with it. So I like that about Camelay Correa as well. But the one thing that I like about him the most, and this is the thing you don't see with a lot of college football pass rushers, is they finish the play. They don't finish the play. And he's one of those guys, great hands to finish the move, okay? When you finish your rush, okay, a lot of guys in college will win initially, but they don't finish the rush. Use your hands to complete the cipher that is your rush up the field. So you can beat a guy initially off the snap, but if you allow him to recover and get his hands on you and push you up the field, guess what? Everything you've done up until that point to win has been negated because now you're two yards beyond the quarterback and you have nothing to do with the play. If you finish the play, and these are what the great ones do in the league. You beat a guy off the line of scrimmage, and he's looking to get you with his hands. Get your goddamn hands off of me. Slap those hands down. Finish the play. Now you up the field. Now you got your shot at the quarterback. Go have you some fun. And so Camille Correa is one of those guys. He beats the tackle, and right when that tackle thinks, I got a shot. I can recover. I can rebound. He'll slap those hands down. Finish the play. Get your hands off of me. Now he's got a free run at the quarterback. And so that's something that Joey Bosa does really well that a lot of people don't talk about. Finishing the play using your hands. That's something that Kevin Dodd does. Finishing the play by using your hands. That's something that my favorite pass rusher in this draft does as well, Leonard Floyd. Finishing the play by using your hands to put that tackle, guard, whomever away and get to the quarterback. You've done all the hard work. Don't, fin don't forget to finish the play by using your hands to seal the deal. And when he wins, he does a great job of closing the distance between he and the quarterback. Closing speed. Uh, some guys like that. Like, I look at a pass rusher like Shaq um, Lawson in this draft, and I'm like, his burst, once he gets past the offensive of lineman, I don't see that burst. I want to see a guy explode. Once I do the hard part and I get rid of that offensive of lineman, I want to explode towards the quarterback. I want to get there as fast as possible because I've done the dirty work. I did the hard lifting already. That heavy lifting, done. 
Now the fun part is about to begin. Get into the quarterback. You should be excited to go and get that guy. Some guys don't have that burst, that extra gear to go get the quarterback after shedding that offensive lineman. Kamale Correa does have that extra burst. That distance between him and the quarterback closes very quickly and he's on that quarterback. And a lot of times he's forcing the football out once he gets there. Stout at the point of attack to wrap up his pros. He's a guy I talked about, uh, I said I was gonna come back to this, talked about it earlier and alluded to him being a very stout defender. He's a guy that I was very surprised held up well at the point of attack. And I thought he did some really good things in a number of games. Even that last game he was in against Arizona in that bowl game, thought he was phenomenal in that game. Couple of really big sacks and some, some tackles for loss. And he was very disruptive in that game. And you can see that in some other games where he's standing tackles up at the point of attack and really being disruptive in the run game. So I think he's a guy that you can trust to set the edge in the run game. Not only get pressure on the quarterback, but also set the edge in the run game. So there's a lot to like here with Camille. Correa. Let's talk about his cons. No bend around the edge. The elite pass rushers at the next level have the ability to bend around the corner, get to that 45 degree angle, and he didn't have that, okay? Justin Houston, Von Miller, the reason why those guys are so explosive and so dangerous is and, and throw a guy like DeMarcus Ware in there as well, who's still getting it done at his ripe old ages because he can bend that corner. You think you got him. And again, these tackles, they're huge. They're mountains of men, okay? We're talking about 6'6 six, six guys, 6'7 six, guys, 6'5 six, guys. They don't want to get down and bend and have to push a guy. So if you can bend that corner, you beat him initially, and then he goes to push you. Remember I talked about finishing the play? You don't have to finish by knocking out the hands all the time. You can finish by ducking around that corner as well. They go to push you, and you duck around, and all they get is air, you got him. They can't recover now. Now it's your job to recover off of that bend, get to the quarterback. You don't get that out of Camille Correa. It's just not a part of his game. I don't think he's flexible enough to bend around the edge. No secondary rush is the next con. He's one of those guys that if the initial rush doesn't work, there's no plan B. There's no backup plan. There's no, okay, I'm going to speed up, up the... Uh, Outside, I'm going speed on the outside. If it doesn't work, I'm going to spin back inside and see if I can't hit pay dirt there. And, and so, so he's a guy, I'm going to try a bull rush. If the bull rush doesn't work, I'm going to try a rip to the inside. There's no extra move. There's no secondary rush. If plan A doesn't work, you got me. Stalemate. So uh, the, the best pass rushers, are, again, I always allude to guys in the league. Von Miller, to me, DeMarcus Ware is the best at the secondary rush. He's a guy that will rush up the field and spin on you quick. Okay, so that outside rush didn't work. Well, I'm spilling to the inside and seeing if I can't get to the quarterback. Oh, I went hard inside. Now you want to come, you want to cut me off to the inside? All right, take this club, and now I'm going back to the outside. So, you know, you got guys with secondary moves. Von Miller, another one of these guys, run up the field, spin on you in a heartbeat. Okay, speed rush to the outside didn't work. Let me try this spin move and get you. So you got to be able to have a secondary rush. You're not going to always win with that initial rush, but you got to keep going and you got to give him something else to try to defend. And he's not a guy that comes with a secondary rush very often. Limited move roller decks. I talked about some moves that he was really good at. The rip to the inside, the explosiveness on the edge, so that speed rush to the outside. The bull rush looks damn good to me. But those are the only moves he has. And when you're not Im implementing a spin move, or you're not implementing a hard rip move to the outside, when you're not implementing a, a hard outside back inside or a hard inside back outside move, it, it limits what you have to throw at the top. And like I said earlier, you don't have to have seven moves. You just need to perfect the three that you have if you only have three. But then you need to be able to use them as secondary moves as well. And he doesn't do a good job of that. So if you're not gonna use the three that you have, as secondary moves, then you need to have other moves as well that will help you have secondary moves, like a spin move, like a hard inside, back outside. So those are things that I think he needs to work on. But if you're just talking about having the raw necessities to get it done at the next level, Kamale Correa has all the things you need to be successful as a pass rusher at the next level. I'm looking forward to seeing where this guy lands because I think he's gonna come off the board fairly quickly because pass rushers don't come a dime a dozen in it. Particularly in this draft, where there aren't many, he's going to be a guy that is going to be in high demand fairly early in the 2016 NFL Draft. That's Camille Correa and his 
Draft Prospects 101 breakdown. If it happens in the National Football League, whether big or small, we cover it all here in the lab. We'll come back and join me as I continue to break down anything and everything. National Football League. I got more players to break down, man. You thought I was done? Can't stop, won't stop. See you next time. There's plenty more where that came from. While you're here, subscribe to the channel. If you want more Louis T, be sure to follow me on Twitter at In The Lab Room or you can like the Facebook page at In The Lab Room. That's In The Lab Room on Facebook and at In The Lab Room on Twitter. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so.